Hello and welcome to Furious Driving and to another episode of Junk in the Trunk and possibly for the last time this is going to be treats in the seats because currently you are sitting on the bonnet of the Mercedes W123 which needs to be outside so that the Rover P6 V8 can come back in here because that's the finished car which well frankly deserves to be in the dry um, but for one last time we're here Mercedes in treating from the seating and there you go so hopefully hopefully also I mean the W123 will actually be able to run fairly soon because a side note, on the 1st of April I can send off the V5 for the W123 and make this thing tax and MOT uh, exempt. So hopefully you'll be driving the thing soon and I will never have paid tax on this car, which is fantastic. And also, as another side note, video probably going to come in the next week or so if the rain stops, uh, the Rover P6 V8, the historic V5 arrived in the post yesterday which is awesome and that means I can now drive that one tax-free MOT exempt so I can take it to a classic car garage to get it checked over and I can actually be on the road in that thing at last. That's a, uh, a little secret you got by watching this video so bonus time for you guys. Right so there's a few bits and pieces that have turned up over the last couple of months for the, this episode of Junk in the Trunk. Um, there's a few things that came in the post and a few things that was handed to me at Rustival and I'll say right now uh, I have a terrible memory for names and I've also got lots of stuff coming in on lots of different sources, email, Instagram, Facebook. And I can only remember a couple of the names that people uh, gave. I can only remember a couple of the names when people put things in my hands because I'm terrible with faces and names. I can remember what car you drive, I can't remember what your name is. I'm really sorry about that. So I'll do my best to try and credit everything where it's due. Anything that is sent in though, I am always incredibly grateful to receive it. Anyway, right, before we get in, one final piece of housekeeping. Check out these magnificent new mugs that are on the furious driving store this is 30 years of the punto and 30 years of the alpha 145 both came out in 1994 in the uk so spirito de punto fabulous artwork by a creator called mr jalco who did this for me um lovely italian scene the punto and the 145 We've got mugs travel mugs tea towels t-shirts you've got if, I, I like it so much i've even got like a big frame print done another thing as well but yeah head over to furiousdriving.co.uk fantastic little bit of picture so yeah, enjoy. Currently it has some black coffee in it. Uh, it's a slightly weak first black coffee in this because it's the end of a bag of coffee and I didn't realize how little there was in there. So perhaps a slightly disappointing first drink from a rather fabulous new mug. Anyway, right, let's go delve into the seats. Right, because it's simply because it's on the top, our first item, which I know is from someone called Dave, is this really, really cool mini rucksack, this backpack, which is from the launch of the original Mini, like my Wire Edge 2001 Mini Cooper. If you bought a Mini in 2001, 2002, there was loads of merch, but there still is loads of merch, that you could go and sort of blag off the dealer. And this is something that he acquired from his, whatever Mini dealer it was, when he bought a Mini, I think he said 2002. It's got the Mini little kind of uh, keyringy type thing on it. It's got the Mini logo on the front. Orange and gray were kind of the corporate colors for all the logos and things. A waterproof bag on the front, I guess a phone bag. Phones were smaller then. You did say there was a, a print or something inside. Oh yes, there is a brochure. Yes. Oh, it's Cardiff, so it's from Wales. Mini Cooper brochure. I say mini, what's it say? Mini Rydale, Cardiff, Rydale Cars, Rydale Central. Oh, hang on, no. Cardiff, Albury, Birmingham, Newport, Sutton Coalfield. Oh, basically it's like a little folder, a binder, document binder thing. But that's pretty cool, this is still also from the earliest days of Mini. That's really cool. That is so, so cool. That is something, I think, going to any kind of Mini event, and there are lots of wire edge Mini events up and down the country throughout the year, that's a perfect thing for putting your sandwiches in, isn't it? I do like the original Mini launch stuff because they went all out to just create a brand from nothing, which is really, oh, there's, there's the mobile phone holder. We I mean, can you imagine, God, that's a iPhone. It's like three times the size of that little hole hold a space, but when you had a Motorola or a Sony Ericsson T68i or something, that would have just popped in there perfectly and just been on your shoulder, ready to just pop out and make a call. Or your Motorola Razor Flip, that would have been cool in there. God, I'm reminiscing about phones again. Right, how sad am I? That is so cool. Thank you, Dave. I really do appreciate that. That is awesome. That's definitely going to be wearing some sandwiches on the way to a, a mini event at some point in the near future. Right, now I've also had some stuff come in the post, so I'm going to alternate this with stuff that came in the post and stuff that I was handed at Rustival. Now this one, I believe, is the oldest item that came in. It came in from uh, Cottage Metalworks in Newry, County Down. So let's have a look what's inside here. So I'm just slicing through the tape with a... 
Well, okay, yeah, Cottage Metal Works. There's a nice little uh, thank you thing with their details. Check them out at uh, Etsy, Etsy.com shop slash shop slash Cottage Metal Works. And what have we got in here? Oh, wow. Oh, I just think I needed a clock in this room earlier today. It is a Rover, a Rover badge clock. There's got a clock on the back of it. Um, I need it. I've got a double A battery out here. Just takes a single double A battery. Oh, and it's also included a couple of mini, classic mini kind of hangers. That's really cool. Oh, that's brilliant. Because I do actually need. I could do with a clock out here, so I'm keeping on the time. I've got a big Mercedes clock I got from the dealership. Pretty really good value actually, over in the barn. But I've not got a clock out here or in my office for that matter. I could do with a clock in the office. That's brilliant. Oh, I like that a lot. So check out. Yeah, as I say, check out Cottage Metal Works on Facebook and on Etsy. And this is from a chap called Ian. There is a letter. Okay, yeah. Hi, Matt. Thought you'd send you in some items for drunk in the drunk and may as a wee sideline. Okay, so it's like a, yeah, not a sideline. I've seen the wall clock. I've seen the wall art Rover logo someone had sent in earlier this year. That was a big, like a metal Rover logo that someone had, had sent in. That's over in the barn on the wall. I thought you'd send these and some mini baubles. Do you know what? Those would be awesome on the Christmas tree. Wouldn't they? Those would be just a little hanger, mini hanger on the Christmas tree. I'm, but basic car stuff has taken over my Christmas tree now. I've been a lifelong Mini fan and restored quite a few over the years. I'm looking forward to seeing the Mini Mark II project progressing. Well, actually, I was going to start doing the uh, the blasting on that this week, but every time I go over there, the phone rang and I got called back home for different things. Uh, just random stuff, not home stuff, just like the deliveries and things. So I never got it started. Um, as well as Minis, I also love Rovers and currently have a 1998 Rover 216 VP, very nice, which I enjoy driving in the summer months, and also working on the 1978 Austin Princess that will hopefully be out in 2024, towing vintage caravan. Oh, that'd be cool. So if I'm reading this slightly awkwardly, I left my glasses in the house and it's really awkward to get over the pile of tools to get back out of the garage again. So I'm kind of squinting a little bit. <laughs> I've not had laser eye surgery and I've not got contact lenses. I just forgot my glasses. So yeah, holding at a different distance. <clears throat> so many thanks, Ian Campbell. Ian, thank you so much. I absolutely love this. This is going in my office. Very see it in the background of uh, only talk to the camera type of things in the future and check out guys check out Met cottage metalworks that is so so cool i love that so the rover and mini love is strong so far in the first two items who knew right let's go for another bag item now this one i had your name on the tip of my tongue a second ago then Blech. but this is a viewer who was constantly frustrated at me trying to diagnose faults with electrics using a multimeter basically said you're wasting your time you need a power probe and i'll be honest i had thought about buying a power probe in the past i've just never gotten around to it and the idea with a power probe is you hook it into your a, a car battery with the, the clunky things and then you push the probe on there and you can either test exactly how much power is going through that item or you can even power that item like a horn or a light or something to see if that component works it's a brilliant tool uh, it's a regular commenter. My mind's gone blank. Oh, you're a regular commenter. You kind of said that um, you sometimes make sort of comments which might come across as being a bit, bit snarky, but it was meant in, in, in good humour, and I know what you mean. Ah, um, oh, damn it. Sorry. But yes, that is brilliant. We had a long chat at the show, and I really do appreciate that. That is a brilliant tool which is going to get a lot of use, with, especially with the Alfa Romeo. You want to hear the horn on the Alfa Romeo at the moment. It's due an MOT in July, and it goes... Meh. It works though, technically it's a pass for an MOT, but not a great pass, probably an advisory. Incidentally, Alpha 145 content coming up very shortly because uh, I didn't get to record any of this because it was a bit of a stress getting out of the show and getting packed up. Alpha 145 tried to do a Rover 200 VI leaving Birmingham episode because there was a puddle under the Alpha when we left Rustable. Video coming soon. Right, back to the seats for more treats. Now this one... This is like one of those Christmas presents. Could it be a bottle of wine or something? This is from, oh, there's a, an address, but there's no name, so I won't show you the address because I don't want people to go and, go and visiting people. Right, this was very well packed indeed. Okay, so we've got two things actually, two things. Uh, first of all, there is, well, MG Rover Group Auto Course 2001 folder. So what is this? Is this like a, I guess this was a training course from 2001 and inside it we've got a little folder which has got some I'll try get it out, some brochures and photos so we've got oh press photo Anthea Turner <laughs> with the MGTF 
Uh, MGF, sorry, MGTF, MGF 1.8 VVC. Lovely shade of British racing green there. We've got an MG Midget postcard, which really wouldn't fly today, but you know, it's absolutely of its time. Uh, she's fondling his handbrake. 85% of midget owners are men, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's another MG postcard. Lovely. This is an MGB one. There's a midget again, sorry. Someday you'll settle down with a nice, sensible girl, a nice, sensible house, a nice, sensible family saloon. Someday. Right now, you're apparently taking your clothes off in the forest. Because that's it's definitely the era of Mad Men there. <laughs> Very cool indeed. Oh, the MG brochure. I'm guessing probably from 2001, judging by the date on on the folder. That is a wicked folder, by the way. That's a four ringer. I could use that for negatives. Okay, this is MG folder. Uh, F or TF? Let's find out. Big, dreamy, out of focus picture at the front. Oh, it's an F. It's the F era. Fun. F for fun. MG fun. I love the idea that only a smallish picture of the car, but lots of picture of, of dreams. They're selling a dream here. Escape, like a, like a seagull to come poop on other people's boring, boring Peugeots and things. Finally, a big picture of the car. Because, oh, this is so early noughties. This is just so, so early noughties. There needs to be a baggy, someone wearing a baggy suit in this. Steptronic, we'll, we'll gloss over that. <laughs> They're showing Steptronic and put a twisty road. That's, yeah, some kind of advertising uh, rule been broken there. The middle of the engine, the VVC. Confidence. They are good cars, actually. I really would like an MGF. I shouldn't say that. I'd love an MGF. The choice is yours. We've got in the back, we've now got, oh, details and spec sheet. Big, sea, big seagull vibe going on here. Wow, there's a lot of colours. I mean, you look at the colour... Uh, palette brochure for a car these days. Is that four colours? There's hardly anything. This is what's that? Six shades of leather, including multi-toned. Like the black and green, the red and cream. That's awesome. Plus six other kinds of. Oh, wow, it's loads. Nine colours, and they're all bright. Apart, well, anthracite and Tahiti are the only two dark ones, really. That's so cool. Cup holders. It's a feature. Cup holders a feature. Big enough. For a small flask. They knew their audience with MG. <laughs> it's the older, the older buyer. <laughs> Approved accessories. Oh, this is so cool. Now I want an MGF. Curse you. Damn your eyes. Oh, price this. How much was an MGF in 2000? I guess 2001. Yeah, I really can't read this without my glasses. Uh, oh, 21,000 for a VVC 1.8i. That's the most expensive one. Wow, before you start chicken auctions. 1,100 quid for aircon. 16 inch wheels are only 500 quid. ABS, not standard. I'm really surprised at that. Only 500 pounds though, so yeah. So already we've got ABS, aircon, and 16 inch wheels, so we're up to another, uh, what, uh, 2,200 or so. Carbon fiber pack, not too worried about that. High mounted stoplight, yeah, we definitely want that. That definitely puts us to 2,200 extra. Oh, the hard top, yeah, I want that. That's another 1,125. Leather trim, 850, so about 4,000 more. Oh, Oxford leather, oh, sorry, yeah, that's another 200 pounds. Hmm, pearl paint, 345 pounds. Passenger airbag, 250. Okay, yeah, we'll we, we put another five. We made it basically made about 28,000 for the one I want. It's always the options. It's always the options. Of course, they learned so much with the Mini, didn't they? Because the Mini was the one that really tipped the edge for making everything an option, and people would spend more on the options than they would on a new Mini in the early noughties, when it was the thing to have. Man alive, clever marketing. Oh, there was another thing, and I got hung up on the MGF in a really cool folder. Right, this is the Bartholomew Road, Road Atlas, I'm guessing from 1930s? When I get a 1930s car, this will be perfect. Interestingly, there are no motorways on this map. <laughs> John Bartholomew and Son Limited, Edinburgh. Oh, 1960. It looks a lot older than that. But yeah, when was the first motorway? What's that, 61 or 62, I think? <clears throat> yeah, the primary trunk roads on this, 1960. Just the A1, the A2, the A3, and the main car ferry is listed as well. Uh, Gravesend, Portsmouth, the main car ferry from Gravesend. Wow. Queen's Ferry. Dundee, Erskine, Balakulish, wow, 
very different times entirely. You really need no no big roads, no big big motorways, just the A roads, the Great North Road, and all the rest of it. Wow, there's like three roads on that page. <laughs> Just out in the Scottish Islands, I think. Anyway, oh, there's a letter with this thing. That is fantastic. That is perfect for something like the, uh, the little beige mini when that's back on the road. So there's a letter. Let's read the letter as well to go with the stuff. Hi, Matt. I hope these things will be of interest to you in your collection. They are things I've collected over a lifetime of owning what I would consider interesting cars, including classic mini, Morris 1000, Midget 1500, MG ZR TD. Okay, yeah. Cute artist. Yeah. The ZR is a 25 base one. ZS is the 45 base one. Yeah, so yeah. And a Mark 1 MGF, hence the brochure. I think the secret to a cool car is not the fastest or the best built, but a car that has lots of character. And that is actually something I really do agree with, because beauty is imperfection. Yes, I'm sure I heard someone clever once say once. This is something your collection is in <laughs> bucket loads. Thank you. Lots of imperfection there. Sadly, a recent stroke has left me in a position where it's unlikely I'll ever drive again. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. However, your channel allows me to keep my interest in hobbyist motoring alive and well. Thank you for all the work you put out in your videos and many hours of entertainment that you've provided through my recovery. Oh, well, I'm glad to be some kind of help in what is obviously a pretty miserable situation. Um, I hope these few items enclosed provide some interest and add to the collection of motoring ephemera. It certainly does. This is from Dave in Yorkshire. In York, in fact. Funny enough, we went to York last summer in Hippo the Freelander. We actually drove over there in, with the roof tent and had a a week up in York. Really, really nice time. Lovely city. And turns out another friend of mine who actually looked through the window of the shop he worked and uh, didn't even know he was there. I was wondering which was the shop he worked in. It turned out I was I could have been looking at him without realising. He's also a, a Rover slash MG owner as well. So it's a small world. Also, two Daves in that pile of stuff. Right, let's go back to a, a Rustable item. Now this one we're back into the realms of people who I had a chat with and I completely can't remember your name now. This is something which is potentially going to be very useful indeed. This is the Fiat Bravo Bravo Punto Tipo Cinco Seicento uh, Lindley Porter's Colour Manuals. I've never seen this range of Lindsay Porter's Colour Manuals before. But it's like a Haynes manual, but, well, a bit more in-depth, frankly. I've never seen one, but it does cover the Mark I Punto from 1993 to 1999. Also, the Tipo Tempera, which are cars I'm quite keen on, the Seicento and Cinquecento, uh, 99 and, or 93 to through 2001 across the pair of them. And of course, the Brava Bravo Morea Weekend, which is a car I've actually owned on the channel. Wouldn't say no to another one. But this is a thick old book. This is kind of a thousand pages long, I reckon. Oh, it's not numbered specifically. It's got wiring diagrams in there. Oh, I'll show you, it's got wiring diagrams. Fact files, interior disassemblement, sunroof had to set apart, that's useful. Oh, the rear drums, oh, I hate rear drums. Everything, you name it, it's in there. So much stuff. Wow, that is a wicked book. I can't believe I've never seen this range before. But that, I guess, cover, there's so many common parts and some, uh, like the engines and things in these cars that it makes sense to combine the entire Fiat range from the 90s in one big book. That is awesome. That's really good. I just wish I could remember the person that gave his name because that was really rude. Okay, let's go for a postal thing again. This is one that's been sat in the car for a little while. The um, thing is, when these things turn up, I don't open them until I actually uh, do the filming of these things. And it seems really rude that I've not replied to people or they've not seen that anything's arrived. But because I want to do it all in one go, seeing it fresh for the first time, my surprise is your surprise. I hope there's no, not any food in here. Oh, there is some more food in my jacket pocket from the other day, actually. Which I really wanted to do eat, but I wanted to show on the camera first, so. Right, I hope, hi Matt, I hope that these are better replacements for what you already have on your Unos. Kind of regards, Lawrence Soyes. Ah, oh, okay, these are, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. These are little, it's a pair of, two of each, side repeaters. Oh, not a repeater, sorry, yeah, um, yeah they're, they're blanked off. They're not American style. They are blanked off because on American ones, they have a light bulb fitting in there for the daytime running lights or just evening running lights. But these are the corner reflectors. So that's really, really cool. I was actually kind of tempted to try and wire in some some uh, running lights on it to make it look like, you know, NADA spec. But yeah, generally the lights are most, well, I'll come back to this in a minute because I've got some more MX-5 stuff. To, to go and look at as well. But these are really cool. And the thing is, you can get them off the car, you can give these a really good polish up. <clears throat> and also, it's really handy to have spares. Like, because I've got the new reflectors for the Alpha 145, and within a couple of days of fitting those reflectors, 
some so and so in Sainsbury backed into the car and cracked one of my new reflectors, which it had taken me weeks to find. Which is sod's law, isn't it? But at least with some spares, if something does happen, you've got something on the shelf to go and just fit straight away. In fact, I'm going to pause this video right now because there is something I forgot to bring out of the car, which I will show it to you right now. Now, before I get into the thing I just remembered I'd left out in the other car, uh, this was also given to me by a Scottish viewer who'd driven all the way down from, oh, it wasn't Edinburgh, was it, or Argyle in Scotland, genuine Scottish fudge, which I've hidden from Mrs. Furious because she loves a bit of fudge. And if I hadn't in it, it would be gone before I'd even, uh, even seen the packet. So thank you so much for that. I'm going to hide it out here. Maybe I'll share them a little bit later on. <laughs> anyway, no, the thing I actually remembered, uh, oh, the other thing I remembered I hadn't brought into the garage. Well, it's a bunch more MX-5 stuff, actually. And I have been scouring my email for your details, because I know we had a long conversation about this before you drove down, and you said you'd bring it to Rustable, and I couldn't find any of your emails to just, just double check your name. And I, that sounds awful, but the search function on Gmail doesn't always help. Pipe in MX-5, I get a thousand emails, and none of them seem to be referring to this. But thank you so much. We had a good look in the back of your Saab, and first of all, there was a couple of good used MX-5 taillights. Now, you might think I've already got good taillights in my car, but there's like a weird spattering on the lenses of mine. It looks like paint or something. I've tried to polish it out and it won't quite. So, this is a nice easy replacement. I'm going to give this a good old polish up off the car and then fit this into the car, or both these into the car, lose those spattery bits and the car will look an awful lot better. And it's, it's a real sort of thing that most people wouldn't notice because if it's your own car, you notice these things. But having a pair of those that are not spattery and are nice and clear and shiny, I can even ceramic glaze them before I put them into the car, would make the thing look a little bit nicer, a little bit posher. Also, <laughs> a variety of bits and pieces, genuine Mazda odds and sods, including this, oh, what switch is this one? I think that's a heated rear window switch, but I haven't got a heated rear window yet, but one day I might switch it over and that'd be handy to have that. There's also a couple of other blanking plates which are on the back end of the Mercedes, little old, tiny sort of Mazda kind of bags like this, which will be very, very handy indeed, should anything ever break or go missing. But the other thing, lighting wise, Whipac, I don't know if these are, I think these are fitted and unfitted without being used or something, but this is something I was actually looking at buying myself because I really do like the look of this on cars, I've seen it with them on. These are, do you think they are new actually? These are the Whipac clear lens lamps. Really, really lovely. So like the lights I've now got in the car, they are the removable bulb type because the original MX-5 Unis Miata came with a sealed beam, so you had to replace the entire unit when they, uh, the bulb went. But these are the crystal clear ones, so they look really, really shiny. You may remember I had to actually clean the inside of the lenses of mine, so I'm going to give them a little fitment in the next video. Oh, that, whoa, whoa, hang on. They haven't got the extra LED. Damn, that's a shame. I haven't got the LED running light. I'll have to figure something out with that. I'm guessing I can't drill glass. Probably not. Wow, those are beautiful. That is a thing to behold. With that unwrapped, we've only got two more things that were handed to me over at Rustival. Oh no, I was wrong. There are four more things that were handed to me at Rustival. First off, we have a 60 years of Land Rover little booklet. So it's like a timeline detailing every model across all the years and a bit of history about each car, about the people behind them. Do I love a bit of trivia like this? This is lovely. I'm, I'm a big Land Rover fan anyway, I'm, even though I know that they are the least reliable cars. You know what they say, if you want to go into the outback, take a Land Rover. If you want to come back again, take a Toyota. But uh, they are incredible vehicles, especially the old series stuff and the early Land Rover, uh, Range Rovers and Discoveries. Gosh. Did you know the Freelander was Europe's best-selling SUV for the first five years of its life? Largely because it was Europe's only SUV for the first five years of its life. Wow, that's so, so cool. That's a brilliant little, little booklet. I love that. That's really cool. Also, it's an interesting bit of history. This is a Haynes book you probably haven't seen before. I haven't certainly seen it before. John Haynes, the man behind the manuals. It's like a biography of the guy. Um, I'm not, I was going to say, is it an autobiography? It's not. It's written by a guy called Ned Temko 
If you grew up in the area when cars and motorbikes were unreliable, John Haynes was the messiah, says James May. This is a really cool book. So yeah, how did um, John Haynes start creating the Haynes manuals? And have you seen the Haynes Museum? Which is it's a Hampshire or Dorset, it's on the sort of south coast area. Absolutely fantastic collection, which he is behind. So yeah, a bit of a motoring legend here in the UK. So that's a great book, a great read. Thank you very much indeed. Now this is the last two things. Two, two, and you know I love a die cast. You know I have a little model, model car. And these are both extremely relevant. First up, and hippotastically, is this awesome little Freelander. Let's get your focus on the thing. Black three-door Mark I, uh, base spec alloys, got a wheel, spare wheel cover, and it's a three-door with a lift-off hardtop, which is basically the car I had back in like 2002. Mine was uh, dark metallic, Oslo blue, which is a bit like Tahiti blue on the Rovers. That's a really cool model. I can't make out the make underneath. Is it Majorette? It might be. Again, no glasses. Um, that's quite a lot of detail on it. got little Land Rover badges on the side, you've got the indicators in orange, you've got the Land Rover script on the front of the bonnet. That's really, really cool. Oh, I do like that a lot. And second small die cast. This is a Hot Wheels, I can tell that one. This is the Morris Mini. Oh, focus, Morris Mini. There are two versions of this Morris Mini. There's a yellow one, which I've got already, and I knew there was the green one, but I've never seen it anywhere. So fabulously, someone very kindly popped this in my hot sticky hand, and I've now got both of the Morris Minis um, from the HW Workshop series which is really, really cool. They're both kind of a, a lowered wide body style with ex arch extensions and so forth. Looking very cool indeed. So my Morris Mini Hot Wheels collection apparently is complete at two, unless there are any more that anyone knows of. So I've got the yellow, got the green. How good is that? Brilliant. Oh, thank you. Anyway, so this has been a surprisingly uh, good episode of, of Junk in the Trunk. No, no new license plates for the collection, sadly. But you know, uh, that is something that is continuing to grow and we'll get that all mounted up on the wall very shortly in the barn, actually, to get them. So you, what I need to do is take it all down and put it back up again and start dividing it more into continents to make it make more sense. Otherwise, it's just a bit of a free-for-all. I can sort of catalog it a bit more easily as well. If you haven't seen that before, I am trying to get a number plate from every country in the planet and stick it on the wall in the barn, which is a ridiculous goal, but something I'm, I'm aiming for. But yeah, thank you so much. If you've sent anything through to Junk in the Trunk, I really do appreciate it. As always, I really like it when you get uh, the letters explaining why you've sent stuff, so I know who to say thank you to. I know there have been emails and things which I've managed to lose because I'm terrible with emails. Not a good office person, me. Um, and obviously some of you just sort of bundled stuff onto me at Rustival, and Rustival was an absolutely overwhelming blur. It was just like gone in a flash. I cannot tell you how scary it was standing on that stage with so many people looking at us at the end. That was, that was, that was quite a moment. If you, if you came along to Rustival, thank you so much. And hopefully we'll be able to put together another one at some point. We're going to have a, a chat about that in the next few days to, to decide with what we're going to do for the future. I think it's too good to make it a one-off. Anyway, if you've got more stuff, more future junks in the trunks, then please do send it over to Furious Driving, PO Box 477, Maidstone, Kent, ME69LE, here in that there United Kingdom. So thank you so much for watching, and join me again next time here on Furious Tea Break for more non-mostly car-rated antics. I'm on the main channel for car-rated antics, and of course, over on Clickbait, if there's anything else you want to watch about cameras. So thank you for watching and goodbye and head over to fearstrapping.co.uk for your spirit of Punto mug.